The SEC Big 12 Challenge rolls on from Columbia, Missouri, presented by Continental Tire, all part of the Saturday Showcase, presented by 5-Hour Energy. It's the first meeting in 68 years between TCU and number 12, Mizzou. Terrific to have you with us on this Saturday. From our home studios, Mark Wise, my partner down in Florida. I'm Mark Neely in the Kansas City area. Uh, interesting matchup here. Mizzou saw a winning streak in the other night. TCU's had some COVID issues, but for Mizzou, Jeremiah Tillman, he's playing about the best basketball he has in his four-year career right now. Uh, Mark, there's no question about that. In Southeastern Conference play alone, Tillman is averaging better than 16 points a game and more than eight boards a game. Why? The big fella has learned to play with emotion, but not play emotionally. That means a lot less foul trouble, which in turn has Tillman playing eight more minutes each game than a season ago. And as you take a look at what he is doing against other SEC foes, he is a load down block to block. For TCU, the combination of R.J. Nemhard and freshman Mike Miles has been sensational. They both will take turns playing the point and then off the ball and combined, they're shooting better than 40% from bonus land. And Mark, if TCU wants to play road spoiler in this challenge, both Nemhard and Miles must play well. TCU played two nights ago in Lawrence, Kansas against KU. That was their first game in 16 days due to COVID protocol. Great to have you with us for the SEC Big 12 Challenge year eight for this challenge. Mizzou's wearing the home whites. TCU, first time this year they've worn the, worn the anthracite gray with the purple trim, and it's TCU that has the game's first possession. Here's the freshman, Mike Miles. He's going to shoot a 15-footer. It rolls off. And a Tillman rebound. Well, for the Missouri Tigers, they had the same starting five for every game this year. A change with Mark Smith having some shooting woes. He is out of the lineup. Javon Pickett, who had been a starter the last two years, makes his first start of the year. And for the Tigers, the lob from Pinson to Tilson to uh, Tillman. Could not quite connect. This is how they would like to utilize Till Tillman as a screener and then let him roll to the basket, let him flash to the basket. Good look at the senior who we featured in our open. Again, playing by far the best basketball in his career. And I think he's done that, Mark, because he slowed down and he slowed himself down from an emotional perspective. And that's kept him out of foul trouble. However, he does struggle at the free throw line. Where he went three for 11 from the line Tuesday at Auburn. And the Tigers 88-82 loss. He did have 21 points, 10 rebounds to Tillman in that game. Which the loss ended Mizzou's three game winning streak. And he hits one and two to start the scoring today. Now for TCU, they made a change in the lineup when they got back to playing in Lawrence on Thursday. Taryn Todd, Chuck O'Banna once again in the lineup for Jamie Dixon's squad. A team that just hasn't had a lot of time in practices. Well, Jamie Dixon has been dealing not only with the COVID protocol for his program, but he had been dealing with COVID and told us last night he is still feeling the effects of COVID. He is not contagious, so he's back around the team and says, hey, it, it takes a lot of energy from him. First shot off the mark for Nimhar. Missouri is a team that really wants to push in transition. They're looking for early offense. That's Tillman over Ledee. So Jaden Ledee quickly in the game for Jamie Dixon. A little big man Kevin Samuel. Here's Nimhart. Miles looking, catch and shoot, banked in by Chuck O'Bannon. 
What, what day of the week is it? I thought it was the weekend. It is a two-point shot, but nonetheless, the bank is open on this Saturday to start the game for TCU. Floater, Drew Smith scores. Pretty interesting, Mark, because I think we have a tug of war as it relates to tempo today. Missouri wants to score every possession in the first half of a shot clock. TCU very comfortable scoring late in the shot clock. Ladie getting some early minutes here for TCU. His baby hook is short and the run out by Kobe Brown. Tillman finishes at the other end. Mizzou scoring in transition. Tillman running the floor as a big guy. Easy points. Again, I, I, I keep coming back to the same point. Missouri is going to run at every possession, every opportunity. Already a five-point lead for Mizzou inside the first three minutes. That's an 18-footer for Miles. It's off the front rim. Rebounded, taken by O'Bannon. And lob up for Ladee. Has to come down with it, but able to go back up and lay it in. And they need something from Ladee. There's no question about that. The Ohio State transfer, has, I think, at times has tried to do too much. Quick shot from Drew Smith that time off the back rim. Miles sealed off there by Pinson. It's a long three, O'Bannon. Bounces all over about every inch of the rim and out of bounds off Ladee and to Mizzou. Such a luxury when you have a big man who can run the floor. Tillman right down Main Street. Gets the pass from Brown for the easy flush. Take another look. That's a pretty good catch and a pretty good pass in terms of Kobe Brown, not really known as a run the break kind of guy. So with the flushes, Mizzou's hit three of their first four from the field. TCU two of seven is now Mark Smith has checked into the game for the Tigers. Again, he had been starting, but has had some shooting issues. Last couple of games combined one for 10 in three-point shooting, four of 19 overall. So comes off the bench today. Brown spins, shoots. One of the areas that Jamie Dixon told us that his team addressed during this last pause, if you will, rebounding. And they were much better the other night against Kansas. Now, TCU has Eddie Lampkin in the game, a true freshman, 6'11", 295-pounder. Here's a drive and a lay-in by P.J. Fuller. But already we've seen three different post players, Kevin Samuel, Ladee, and Lampkin, trying to have an answer here for Jeremiah Tillman of Mizzou. Lampkin trying to stay with Tillman, who reverses it and scores. I think that's a part of Tillman's game that has gotten better and better. His ability to catch with his feet down in that high rent district and make some sort of move to create space and a scoring opportunity. Drive Fuller, out of bounds, staying with TCU. Three point lead for Mizzou at the 15-32 mark of the first half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire for what you do. Some of the great players from both these teams that have found their way to the NBA, including the Porters, Michael Porter, who was on the last Mizzou tournament team in 2018 as the Tigers Look to get back to the NCAA tournament for a 28th time in school history. And there is the fourth-year head coach, Conzo Martin. Great chat with him yesterday, Mark. I, I, you can't help but love the man's enthusiasm and his respect and knowledge of the game. Uh, no doubt about that, Mark. And when you take a look at Missouri's resume, you know, Selection Sunday will be here before we know it. And the committee is going to ask these three questions of every program. Who'd you play, who'd you beat, and where did you beat them? It's a data-driven process. Here's the data for Missouri. Solid in terms of that strength of record in the top 10. One of the reasons why Lenardi has the Tigers right now on that four line. And yeah, they were a three seed yesterday, a four seed today, so that's a fluid situation. O'Bannon has a couple of baskets for TCU to make it a one-point game. 
Interesting to see how TCU has been handling Tillman, who is not in the game right now with Mitchell Smith checked in for the Tigers. But Kevin Samuel got an early foul for TCU. And Jamie Dixon brought in Jaden Ledeek. And then Eddie Lampkin, a true freshman, who's still on the floor now, number zero. Bruce Smith held to his feet. So right out of the shoot, we saw a little interesting twist in this game, Mark Wise, of, of having to try to keep up with Tillman after that early foul to Kevin Samuel. I think there's two things in play here. One is TCU's playing their second game in three days on the road and maybe saving a little win. But I think maybe Jamie Dixon is trying to wear Jeremiah Tillman down by playing different bodies and putting different defenders on him. Godzell Martin has brought in Parker Brown off the bench. We mentioned that Mitchell Smith, number five, 6'10", redshirt senior, also in the game for Mizzou. Pickett got a hand on that to block it for the Tigers. You got Drew Bugs in the game for the Tigers as well, number two. Miles. The drive and the score. TCU in transition with a bucket. They Miles take their got first lead. The, yeah, Miles got off to such a great start in that game two nights ago at Kansas. Matter of fact, the entire team did. TCU led in that game out of the gates 10 2. Miles had 18 points in that game after not scoring in the first meeting of the season with Kansas. The issue for TCU the other night was all the turnovers. They had 20 plus turnovers, something Jamie Dixon says they need to certainly clean up. Catch and shoot. Nimhart off the right side. Quick shot by the Frogs, a one and done. TCU's got to be careful in terms of tempo. Shooting quick really plays more into Missouri's hands. Well, we've already had a, a couple of games that are finished in this SEC Big 12 Challenge. And it's one side apiece. Now, with the Kentucky-Tennessee game canceled because of COVID issues with Kentucky, nine games and not ten. So hopefully we get... All nine games in that are on the slate today, Mark Wise. And if that's the case, we know we won't have a tie between the conferences. <laughs> I'm not surprised we're one and one after the first two games, but I am a little surprised at how we got there. I thought Oklahoma was marvelous defensively early on and really set the tone. Oklahoma's defense today was better than Alabama's offense. They held on and ended Bama's winning streak. I should say flipped around as Alabama and Oklahoma's 66-61 final in A&M getting a 7-point win at K-State. That was a tight game, as you saw here on ESPNU, down to the wire until A&M got a little separation late. And Florida, West Virginia on ESPN and Tech LSU on ESPN2 right now going on. It's a fun day here. I, you spend so much time in conference play, and Mark, you've got the issues with COVID, so a lot of right. times conference games don't get played, but it is fun still to have this Big 12 SEC challenge going off. Mark, we have such a void of non-conference data this year because of the season getting pushed back a couple of weeks, all the games that got missed, the pop-up games uh, as a result of that. So not only are these games important from a conference versus conference perspective, I, I think there's some resumes um, that are really going to uh, benefit if you can get a win. A step through by Tillman. You got the Tillman-Samuel matchup back to what we had for just about a minute after the tip. We did see some free throw action from Samuel. Samuel and Tillman, one thing they do have in common, both have had issues from the foul line. TCU plays a lot of this four out, one in, and really it's not even one in. They utilize Samuel as basically a screener. Mark, in the opening, you asked me if Missouri is the second best team in the SEC, so I'm going to flip the script on you. We all know Baylor is the best team in the Big 12. Who's the next best team? I'm going to have to hedge on that because it really is an open question. It, it is not Kansas, and I think that has been proven over the last few weeks with their struggles. I think there's a host of teams, which I think you would include Texas Tech in that mix. Oklahoma, as we saw today, they've been playing very well. There's a Florida from the baseline that's good for Pinson. 
But Alabama, no question, they, they had been unbeaten coming, and we're going to have Alabama, there's Alabama and Mizzou a, a week from today. That's going to be a huge game in the SEC, on the SEC network. Penson's got to get more consistent, though, in, in terms of his production for Coach Martin. When you take a look at it, Penson's last four games, Mark, he's gone for seven points, two points, 27 points, and seven points. Well, Penson, according to his head coach, Conzo Martin, there, there was a discussion between the two last week. Conzo said, hey, you know, the discussion is mainly what we've been saying for a while now with Xavier, is we want to see more north-south. Driving to the bucket. He pulls up here with a 14-footer. And taken right away by Tillman, who just ripped it right out of the hands of P.J. Fuller and said, take that. Well, that's part of the problem. If you're going to rebound defensively and have that one-and-done mentality, you better know where Mr. Tillman is at all times. I, I just get the sense, Mark, that TCU has got the tempo that they want now, though. Yeah, they definitely do not. TCU does not want to play Mizzou in an up-tempo game. How about this play, though? Ripped it right away. Tillman showing the strong hands in the dunk. Well, we're in the early part of the day, but it's a full day of college hoops across all our networks. Number 15, Kansas taking on number 18, Tennessee in Knoxville at 6 Eastern, 5 Central tonight. Then the number one team in the nation, the Zags, Gonzaga, takes on Pepperdine in a big West Coast Conference clash. And in Columbia, it's a one-point lead for Mizzou over TCU with just over 11 minutes to go in the first half. SEC Big 12 Challenge. There's what's on the slate for this evening. I'm, I'm intrigued by Baylor-Auburn. Of course, Baylor has been so spectacular, unbeaten. Auburn, Sharif Cooper, with his tremendous game against Mizzou on Tuesday night, gets a chance to see one of the top teams in the nation. Mark, when you're talking about Auburn, their record right now in my world is 4-2. and two. Forget being 10-7 and seven and 4-5 and five as, the, as a, the, it shows up in standings. They're 4-2 and two because those are the six games that Auburn has played with Sharif Cooper. Right now, Tillman. TCU struggling to handle Jeremiah Tillman. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going with it, Mark. They're just trying to find some answer or at least some way to try to slow Tillman down. He misses the free throw. Well, Mizzou gets it back as it skipped all the way to Brown. 13 points for Tillman, who's 6 of 6 from the field, with really all those shots coming right at the rim. Try to float it up to him, but that time, Eddie Lampkin got a big hand in the way. Nice pass from Nimhard down to Mickey Pearson. Another player who doesn't get a whole lot of playing time for TCU is the redshirt freshman Pearson out of Lincoln, Alabama. Mark, you do a lot of TCU games, and, and I made, made this mention to Jamie Dixon yesterday. I think you know what you're going to get out of TCU with Nimhard, Miles, and Samuel. But somebody else needs to step up and be an occasional double-figure scorer, all the way from Easley to Pearson and everybody in between. Offensive foul on R.J. Nimhard. Well, Tillman's off to a six-for-six six start with 13 points midway through the first half. But TCU's only down one. They do see Nimhard leave the game with two fouls, though, so that's significant. Their leading score now on the bench with a lot of time. 9.57 left in the half. Pinson three, he got that to fall. How did that go in? You, you would never get that bounce at the carnival. That's the first three made today by either side. Mizzou had missed their first four. TCU is 0 for 3 so far in three-point shooting. And that's going to be over and back as Pearson looked up and dribbled off his hip. If you were at the circus or carnival and you were going for the big prize, I promise you, you would never get that kind of friendly dead bounce 
off the back of the iron. Pinson takes advantage. Well, I mentioned that Nimhard's on the bench for TCU with two. Drew Smith's on the bench for Mizzou with two fouls. And Drew Smith comes in with four consecutive double-figure scoring games. If you look at the games prior to those four, the reason he didn't score double figures, foul issues. And, and more early foul issues for him here today, Mark. Yeah, it's hard to score. It's hard to be productive when you're sitting over there next to the coaching staff. Jumper from the elbow. That's off TCU. And Taryn Todd. Jamie Dick squad has lost four in a row. Their last win is against Kansas State on January 2nd. Again, there was a 16-day COVID protocol issue where they did not play at all. Vincent now with that lay-in. He has seven points. Jamie Dick got the steal admitted to us that they've had more practices canceled than they've had on the floor. Yeah, that, that's... It, obviously, COVID has been an issue for every team. Some hit more significantly than others, and TCU has been one on the end of the scale that they have had a lot of downtime. So there's their issues, and then you see the cancellations against West Virginia Tech and Texas during that 16-day span when they did not have, could not play games. The shot that clock winded down. Yeah, that miss. That's out of bounds. Was tied with eight minutes to go. Oh, TCU, I, I, watching that game, I, I thought they, for much of the game, they led throughout a good portion of the game. Kansas, quite frankly, didn't play very well as they have been struggling, but... Uh, Kansas' best game of the year probably was their first meeting with TCU in Fort Worth. But Jamie Dixon's team, they had a shot the other night in Lawrence. No question. I like what I'm seeing. I, I like this the other night when I was watching the Kansas game, but I like what I'm seeing from Chuck O'Bannon in terms of a mindset to help the team offensively. He has seven points in his eight minutes on the floor. He started for the second straight game. Miles couldn't get it over Tillman, but there is Samuel and one. And really, Kevin Samuel, that, that that's his M.O., is scoring off missed shots for TCU. Well, for a team that struggles to score offensively at times, hit the offens offensive glass. Kevin Samuel with the putback after the miss. TCU right there. Let's take a look at the Wendy's Wooden Watch and the players that are participating in today's SEC Big 12 Challenge, including three on the Big 12 side with the freshman Kate Cunningham, Jared Butler, Derek Culver, and John Fulkerson for Tennessee. How about Jared Butler? 48% three-point shooting on the year for a team that's uh, not lost a game. Well, not only have they not lost, nobody gets to play them very close down the stretch in games. And that's such an interesting matchup with Butler and Mitchell against Sharif Cooper. We talked about that a little bit earlier. In, in order for Auburn to be around at the end, I, I'm saying Auburn's got to make at least 10 threes today, and that is a tall order against the Butler defense. Samuel misses the free throw. It's been a bugaboo for him. He had missed 15 in a row at one point until hitting one late in the game the other night in Lawrence. So it stays a one-point lead for Mizzou. Do have Bruce Smith back in the game. He has the ball from Mizzou playing with two fouls. That surprises me a little tilt. bit. And there's the move. The step through by Tillman. Right now, TCU doesn't have an answer for that. He is 7 of 7 from the field, 15 points. The important thing there is where is Tillman's feet when he catches the ball? TCU's going to have to do a better job getting Tillman further off the lane. Darren Todd couldn't get the circus reverse to go. Pull up by Pickett. Good. Well, even though Pickett was in the starting lineup today, 
He's been there 53 times in his last two years. Missouri up five. Well, here's our ACC Big 12 Big Monday games on ESPN, as well as the app. Duke squares off against Miami at 7 Eastern. And then we head to the Big 12 for the matchup of the night, number 24, OU, Oklahoma. Taking on number 10, Texas Tech in Lubbock. And Mark Wise asked me to pick who I thought the second best team in the Big 12 is right now. Those two are certainly my candidates in there, along with West Virginia and Texas. And I'm still sitting on the fence because... It's obvious that Baylor, there's a pretty big gap right now between Baylor and the rest of the conference. Drive, bucket, and one chance for P.J. Fuller. So you haven't had any trouble deciding that Baylor is the best team in the Big 12. <laughs> no. I, is that I, what I, you're telling me? I'm really going out on a limb there, but, yeah, I, I have... I mean, basically they lost Freddie Gillespie off last year's team, and Devontae Bandu is a great six-man. But everybody else back, and that shows with their experience. And Jared Butler, a year older. I'll say this, Gonzaga and Baylor, and then the rest of the country, too, as well right now. A little 3-2 zone by TCU. Shoot right over the top of it. Pickett knocks down a three. Pickett, just a 28% shooter from the arc on the year. As a matter of fact, this Missouri team really doesn't shoot a lot of threes, less than 18 a game in league play. They don't make a lot of threes, five and a half. They don't make them at a very high rate, 29%. That's 12th in the league, but Pickett shot that with confidence. Samuel trying to get a little come up. It's on Tillman down at the other end and puts one up and over the big man and makes it a three-point game. But back to your point on three-point shooting, is that something that can be an issue for Mizzou in the NCAA tournaments? Uh, no shooting question. Shooting less than 30%. No question. I, I think, I've always said, Mark, I think more big games are lost, and big games obviously in the NCAA tournament, more big games are lost because you couldn't score, not because you couldn't defend. Well, Mizzou's been scoring. They've made their last four in a row from the field. Tillman, eight of eight on the day, with 17 points in his 10 minutes of action. Miles getting in the lane. You can see why they really like true freshman Mike Miles out of Lancaster, Texas High School. Mizzou trying to quickly get to the other end. Pickett got too far underneath, and some good defense by P.J. Fuller. Hard for me to come to grips with that Miles was not in the top 100 in terms of recruits. I agree with you, and I asked Jamie Dixon about that. And, and he's not going to look a gift horse in the mouth because where Miles is from is just south of downtown Dallas in Dallas County. It's not far from TCU. So he takes the, the kid from the neighborhood, so to speak, and it's worked out really, really well for him. We talked about the combination of Miles and Nemhard. They need to play well. First, take a look at Mike Miles, left-handed, challenging the bigs, and then Nemhard in the middle of the lane with the little floater. So when these two guys play well, they almost need to play well every night, but when they get some help, and so far today, Fuller and O'Bannon have given a TCU just a little bit of punch off the bench. Tillman on the freshman Lampkin. There's the first shot miss. And for the first time, though, today, really, Mark, they had pushed Tillman at least a little bit away from the basket. Yeah, just a little bit out of his scoring range. Miles fouled. Count the shot. Or no, yeah, is he see the, it's, he's saying a flop warning, I think, is the, the call. I here. agree. I think this is on Miles for, as a flop warning. Take another look on the step back. The challenge by Mark Smith. See, there's no contact there. I like this. So it's Just a make flop it quick. warning. Yeah. Gets one. He gets another. It's a technical. But speaking of Miles, I, speaking with him a few weeks ago, I asked him, who are the guards, the NBA guards, that you really looked up to growing up? And he quickly came off the top of his head, and he said, Chris Paul, Allen Iverson with a two. But the NBA player he is closest to is not a guard. He and Julius Randle have a tight friendship where they keep in touch quite a bit. Three from Xavier Pinson. 
the best three balls come when feet get in the paint or after offensive rebounds. And the corner three is the best three-point shot, and Missouri took advantage of both of those happening at the same time. Under four minutes to go, first half. Fuller, a little fade away, got that to go, and we are tied. So here's, you got Mizzou has 17 points from Tillman. At TCU and Mizzou are tied with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. But Fuller was seven off the bench. O'Bannon was seven off the bench. I mean, these, this is a big time help in terms of TCU on their offensive end. Because they have not been getting a lot of production off the bench. Getting some so far today. That's almost picked off by Pickett. That's a deep three for Miles for the lead, and it's just a hair long. Vincent trying to float it up for Brown. Mark Smith stumbles, keeps possession. Almost picked off by Miles, the drive by Pinson, and he has it stripped away by Ledee. There wasn't anything that looked good about that possession. Actually, it was easily who got the steal, but it's converted by Ledee at the other end. And TCU with a two-point lead with two and a half minutes to go in the first half. TCU's done a much job protecting the ball. They had 20-plus turnovers in Lawrence Thursday night, just three. Brown answering. That's a tough two, though. That's one you can live with. Zoo's led by as many as six. TCU led by three about seven minutes into the game. The lefty puts it up and swish for Taryn Todd, the redshirt freshman out of Ontario, Canada. Sometimes help off the bench can be contagious both ways, both good and bad. And right now, TCU getting all kinds of help off the bench. They made eight of their last nine from the field. And without those dunks and close-in shots from Tillman, Mizzou's gone a bit cold. Mizzou takes so many deep threes. That goes in for Miles. Largest lead of the game for TCU. They're up five with just over a minute to play in half one from Columbia. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. Well, the Missouri Tigers team earlier this week played at Auburn. Prior to the game, they took the short bus ride up to Montgomery, Alabama, and visited the National Memorial for Peace and Justice. The Tiger team there, an important experience for Conzo Martin and the Tigers. And Coach Martin's quote after that trip, you see there on the left, and that's uh, a great sentiment where we can just all be a better society. Mark, I found it interesting that when Conzo Martin talked to our entire broadcast team yesterday, for about 15 minutes, the discussion had nothing to do with basketball. And it was a, that's what made it so fun and in, insightful. Well, Mark Smith fouled by P.J. Fuller. See if that was a three-point shot. Not a good foul by Fuller there. Mark Smith struggling shooting threes, and then he's going to take a step back three. I've, I've only seen one guy in the Southeastern Conference this season that I would give the freedom to take step back threes, and that's Cam Thomas for LSU, who is a bucket getter. TCU's been on a 20 to 10 run here, so that turns into a 20 11 run as Mark Smith hits the second of the three free throws. Both teams have a foul to give, and that is something that college coaches just do not utilize, I don't think, enough. Mark Smith 
84% foul shooter gets two of three there. They get a three-point game with under a minute to go first half in this SEC Big 12 challenge from Columbia, Missouri. Neymar playing with a couple of fouls. Tried to dump it down low to Samuel. I don't think anybody from TCU touched that, or did they? Well, the officials confirming. <laughs> the officials said it went off somebody's foot. Now, somebody may have touched it, but I don't think it went off anybody's foot. Take another look on this bounce pass. Yeah, that, there was nobody's foot anywhere around. That's David, a break. Patrick Evans, uh, Todd Austin, our crew in there is a uh, travel <laughs> to give the what ball did, to What do we say, Mark? The ball don't lie. <laughs> uh. This is the play before where Nimhard just kind of fumbles this ball out of bounds. I can see from that angle, though, Samuel kind of lifted that right leg and almost made it look like it hit him. But I think that was an optical illusion for the official. But that was the same team anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very valid point. Got about an eight-second difference. Shot clock and game clock trying to feed it to Tillman. That was a dangerous pass from Bugs. Now he has to buy for it. Loose ball, a grab by Mark Smith. I don't know if that was supposed to be a shot or a lob for Tillman. But a long outlet pass, and Todd has it blocked. Samuel gets it. Seconds winding down. We're down to six. That's a long two. Good! What a wild sequence to take us to the end of the first half in Columbia. And a five-point lead for TCU. We'll send you to the studio on the other side of the break from this SEC Big 12 Challenge. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy. Get it done. We welcome you back from Columbia, Missouri, the Saturday Showcase, also presented by Five Hour Energy. Get ready for the start of the second half. TCU leading number 12, Mizzou, 43 to 38. This is the eighth annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. Two finals so far in the books. Oklahoma was able to win at home over Alabama. And Texas A&M won on the road at K-State. So each conference has a win so far. And it's great to have you with us from our home studios. My partner, Mark Wise, down in Florida. I'm Mark Neely in the Kansas City area. TCU, I mean, this is a team that really has struggled to score at times. They hit 14 of their last 18 shots in the first half, Mark. Mark, when we talk to coaches, they're usually talking about, we've got to defend and rebound, we got to defend and rebound. No, you don't. Stop that. You've got to make shots. That's exactly what TCU did in the first half. They made 59%. And when you combine or compare the two-point shooting, midweek, two nights ago at Kansas, TCU was 11 for 33, 33%. Here in the first half today, there's 17 of 22 shooting twos. Make shots. And they've been getting some help off the bench. Uh, Chuck O'Bannon had been a bench player, but he started the last two games, including today. And he was a key for them early in the game. Made a couple of tough mid-range jumpers to kind of get and kickstart the TCU offense going. And after that, the rim looks a little bit bigger, and so he knocks down a three. Mike Miles is just fun to watch. Smooth operator, can create shots in different ways, doesn't mind attacking the rim, gives you that presence in a strong place as a, as a strong point guard at times. Speaking of strong, Jeremiah Tillman was dominant block to block, making eight of nine shots en route to 17 first half points. TCU really did not have an answer for the big fella inside. Xavier Pinson was the other double-figure scorer for Missouri in the first 20. Had 10 points, knocked down a couple of three balls en route. And right now, because Drew Smith had some early foul troubles, Pinson's had to spend a lot of time at the point. Look at the points in the paint for TCU. That, that, that's, the, that's probably the stat that stands out for me, Mark. We knew Mizzou right. was getting points in the paint from Tillman, he had 17 of their 22 in the paint, but for TCU, 24 points in the paint. Well, they've done it in a different way because 
while Missouri scores with Tillman, they're big down block to block. TCU scores their paint points, a lot of those with Mike Miles and his ability to get to the rim. Miles leading TCU in the first half with 10 points. The Frogs went on a 22 to 12 run to end the first half. And their five point lead is their largest of the game, overcoming an, an earlier six point deficit to the Tigers in the first half. Are they looking forward to in half number two? I assume we're going to see a lot more Jeremiah Tillman. Well, first of all, Missouri, I think, has to do a better job of keeping the ball in front of them on defense. TCU's ab ability to beat Missouri off the bounce, very impressive, and it starts with Mike Miles. Penson might be matched, uh, matched up, and that might be the game within the game. And then TCU, they've got to get a better handle down low on Tillman. Now, what's interesting, with Kevin Samuel, TCU's not really a double team, the block kind of team. So they're uh, going to allow Samuel to play one-on-one -on -one with Tillman down low. We'll see if that changes. We'll see how half number two goes. These teams meeting for the first time since 1952. It's been 68 years. There is no truth to the rumor Mark Neely and I did that game. <laughs> there have been five all-time matchups. Mizzou's won four of the five, and they all happened in a six-year span between 1946 and 1952, well before our time. But a good start for the Tigers in half number two. And Kobe Brown just 22% part of that problem for Missouri, really shooting the three ball. But again, it's the corner three that's so dangerous. Here in time. Oh. Yeah, TCU offensively is playing with a little swagger. I have not seen this out of TCU in a while. Now they take steal. Taking tough twos, making tough twos. Miles runs into the big man Tillman, gives it up. Nimhart baseline from the short corner. Brown able to snag that rebound while falling out of bounds to get it to Pinson. Bruce Smith picked up a couple of early fouls in the first half, which limited his time. And that's Samuel getting a little bit of the help defense, but still a foul with Tillman trying to get to the rim. Tillman that time with a quick spin move down on the baseline. Again, so much of post play is where are your feet when you catch it. Notice it's just one step off the block, but that quick spin move. Gets him around Samuel, gets him back to the free throw line. But this is where the adventure begins for both Tillman and Samuel. So Tillman won a four from the line after that miss today. Of course, at Auburn, he was three for 11. He does salvage the second free throw, make it a three-point game. Drew Smith defending Nimhard. Drew Smith played only six minutes in that first half with the two fouls. Miles trying to give it up to Samuel, a dangerous pass, and Brown able to take it away from Kevin Samuel. Drew Smith. Wide open look for Pinson, and he drains it. Two older guards playing well together. Good little give and go to create space. So Mizzou's hit a couple of three-point shots here early in the second half and have erased that five-point deficit and tied the game. Miles, a lot of dribbling, elects to shoot a three, and he hits that. TCU just making every shot, even the tough ones. Mike Miles, though, he has that ability. Is he one of the biggest surprises this season in the Big 12, Mark? I think he's... He was definitely an unknown. I don't think the rest of the conference realized how good a recruit Miles has been. Great ball movement by Missouri. Two extra passes. Frees up Pinson. And then watch this individual step back three. Oh, that is money. First three of the game for Miles, who's been a pretty good three-point shooter. 43% on the year coming in. You know, you'll take that from a true freshman anytime. You know what Jimmy Dixon just told Mike Miles in that little huddle there? Keep Don't. shooting. Keep making them. <laughs>
This freshman has 13 points. This SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Continental Tire. Number 12, Mizzou. Right now, ooh, he, ooh they're going to call a push. I think this is a late whistle, but I think it's the correct call because I thought Pickett, and I think he knows it too. I think Pickett was trying to create an over and back if Todd wasn't able to recover and get the ball before it bounced back to the other side of midcourt. First foul, by the way, on Pickett. So impressive to watch either Miles or Nimhard run the offense. And there's Miles taking it to the rim with Tillman defending the rim. 15 points for the freshman. The other way, Mizzou quickly, Javon Pickett. The guys scoring at the rim on both ends. I love Miles' ability to... He doesn't look like a freshman to me when he drives the ball to the rim. So mature, kind of sees the game in slow motion. TCU slows it down a bit here in the half court. I don't think this is a game, Mark, that TCU wants to get into the high, into the 80s or high 80s. And with but they the don't shot mind clock, if they keep the making shots. Down. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. They're going to keep making shots like that three from O'Bannon, who now has 12 points. Pence in the floater, tried to kiss. Stolen right back. Pick it with numbers and Tillman fouled by O'Bannon. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this lob by Pickett. It's such a high risk. Tillman does a marvelous job of just catching as a big to get himself to the free throw line. Tillman two of five from the line. Started the day 51% on the year. Yeah, he, he kind of shoots it from his chin, and I'm sure that the staff has worked on his shooting form, but if you watch him shoot the ball, it kind of his shooting motion actually is more chin-like than at the eye level. That's much better. Couldn't sink either one, however, and it remains a five-point lead for TCU. If you miss two free throws, that is the silent turnover. That was almost a turnover on a wide pass to O'Bannon and almost hit the shot from the sideline. The three-point shot makes it a two-point game. Now it's contagious on both teams. This is what we love, though, isn't it? Good offense scoring, right? 17 points now for Pinson, who's hit four of six three-point shots. And a foul stops us with 15-17 to play in the half. When we come back, it'll be our privilege to welcome the SEC Commissioner, Greg Sankey. The SEC Big 12 Challenge, edition number eight. And what a great game we got going on in Columbia. TCU leading Mizzou by 253-51. We are happy to bring in the commissioner of the SEC, Greg Sankey. Let me start off. We were just talking during the break. You mentioned to us this is your first SEC basketball game that you have attended this year. But let me ask you this. You had, uh, well, with Kentucky being canceled because of COVID, three other SEC sites you could have gone to. What, what was the reason it brought you to uh, Columbia today? Well, Conzo's team's playing well, number one. Uh, number two, I have a tradition of a doubleheader on these days. Last year, I drove to Auburn and Alabama. This year, I'm, I'm here, and then I'm going to head to Knoxville for four Tennessee's games tonight. tonight. And so Daniel I can make Tennessee, it work. Kansas. Uh, hey, let me ask you quickly about the SEC Big 12 Challenge, which seems like it's been a great success. I believe there's a handful of years left on the current extension. Where does that stand, and what's the future of this? You asked me the question I didn't study up on. I've got every other fact <laughs> and figure now. In fact, I knew it was eight. Um, you know, it's been it's been a good respite when we moved it to this point in January. You're in this, this week between the NFL playoffs and the Super Bowl. 
uh, a chance to kind of refresh competition where you're not just in the grind of conference versus conference. And we respect and enjoy our rivalry with our, our Big 12 friends. And uh, they've come up on the on the better end many years, but we've seen the improvement in the SEC team's performance. And hopefully we'll see this one finish our way today. Commissioner, in, the, in these strange COVID times, how many sleepless nights have you had? Many. Um, I, I joked that I was a want to leave PM guy like through August and September and I needed to stop counting. You know, we have great leadership. I saw a Moon Choi here uh, earlier, the, the chancellor, Jim Sturk, and I visited. I go back to July and I spent a weekend one on one with every president or chancellor just talking about what are we going to do? And I knew that they had patience and that's what we needed to make decisions. And uh, a lot of sleepless nights. I, I worked well to panic privately, not publicly. Uh, and it was hard. And, and, you know, talking to football coaches, volleyball coaches, soccer coaches, and student athletes with their questions, some of which were just unanswerable. But we just said, we're going to try. We're going to do this a healthy way, and we're going to make the effort. And it's produced great storylines throughout the year, really. As far as basketball is concerned, where, where are discussions now about that last weekend of the regular season, that open w window for makeup games? Yeah, we've used that in the men's side for, for replacement or rescheduling of games. We, we have a set that we're holding right now. We haven't announced uh, placement of those games because we may have disruption in the next few weeks, which opens up some maneuvering. Um, so that's kind of reality one and reality two. Uh, we announced earlier this morning uh, that we have some, some rescheduled women's games, which will make us whole on February 7th. And the great thing about what's happened in our league is people have been flexible. I saw Eli Drinkwitz, the head football coach here. I think we may have moved as many Missouri football games as, as anyone. And you, we called on a Monday and said, remember you're playing Arkansas Saturday? You're not. You're playing Vanderbilt. And we had to call Vanderbilt and say the same. And that produced the Sarah Fuller moment that... Uh, with, with a kickoff and then extra points against the Tennessee game. So when you try and you collaborate and are flexible, you can achieve remarkable things, and that's what's happened in the SEC this year. A lot of discussion around the country about conference tournaments. Where do those discussions lie right now? We are focused on playing our season as scheduled. That's been our mantra, and we'll adjust to the circumstances around the virus. The, the ethos of this league is that we have great competitors who want to compete. And our tournament's a meaningful opportunity for competition. We are one of the few, and maybe the only conference that is, has held a postseason tournament. That was soccer. And it feeds into that Sarah Fuller storyline. We had a 14-team soccer tournament over 10 days in Orange Beach. Did it in a healthy way. Uh, everyone competed at a high level. And, and we think we can do the same thing. But we'll be attentive to realities around how we we structure our event, uh, but we're prepared to play women's basketball in Greenville and men's basketball in Nashville. Well, you're the eighth commissioner in SEC history, and not to downplay the, the contributions of your seven predecessors, but none of them had to deal with, with COVID. Uh, we have vaccines out there. More people are getting vaccinated. Do you even dare let yourself think about a post-pandemic era yet, or is it just too soon? Well, in the way we did, we announced a football schedule on Wednesday. That's a flag in the ground to say that's back to what we knew as normal before this year. I, uh, the next thing we, we issued is a statement from me basically saying, I can't guarantee that reality, but we're going to try. So have I thought about it? Sure, but we're going to have to work in this environment, um, and that's our reality. It's been a pleasure to chat with you. Commissioner Very Sankey, so, thank yeah. you so much for the time. We appreciate it. Yep, thanks for your work, and uh, let's see what happens here at the end. Go Missouri. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it, Coke. SEC Big 12 Challenge. TCU, a six-point lead, equaling their largest of the game. They just played two days ago. Two nights ago in Lawrence against number 15, Kansas, they shot only 35% from the field. Look at what they're doing today. They're shooting 60%. Mark, do you know what that tells me? It tells me that preparation and rest is way overrated. Let your guys make shots, man. Miles leading TCU with 17. O'Bannon has a dozen. For Mizzou, Tillman 
18 points. Most of that damage certainly came in the first half. Pinson has added 17. He's hit four threes. It seems like TCU has done a better job on Tillman here in the second half, Mark. Yeah, but what do you give up as a result? result of having a lot of defenders down in the paint. You got Pinson hitting threes. Mizzou's hit three of nine threes in the first half. They're three of five in three-point shooting. And as I say that, they do establish Tillman down low, and he lays it in. 20 points for Jeremiah Tillman. Came in averaging 13 a game. That was such an impressive move by Tillman. Who felt the pressure on the high side went away from the defender to create that deuce. Bruce Smith, by the way, playing with three fouls for the Tigers. That rolls off for Kevin Easley. Really have been impressed with TCU's, for the most part, transition defense. They have not allowed Missouri to have many easy, quick looks. That's danger zone, though. And that time, Samuel comes away with the rebound after the Tillman miss. And that's one Tillman should make. Driving, Tillman commits the foul on Fuller. 10.39 to go. TCU by four in Columbia. Here is this week's NBA Saturday primetime matchup on ABC and the ESPN app. LeBron, AD, and the Lakers on a seven-game road trip. It takes them to the Garden in Boston to battle the rival Celtics. And our coverage begins with NBA countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Speaking of the NBA, some of the players that are playing in today's SEC Big 12 Challenge that you may be seeing in the NBA in the not-too-distant future include Kate Cunningham of Oklahoma State, who right now is listed as the top overall pick in the the next NBA draft. I'm going to say Sharif Cooper, who's listed at 25 now, is going to work his way up and eventually will be in the top 15 <laughs> and a lottery pick. I will tell you this, Mark Neely, he can do something I don't think 10 players on the planet can do, and I include the NBA in that. He can throw a lob pass off the bounce with his off hand on point better than anybody I've seen in college in a very long time. The Auburn Tigers... I mentioned this in the first half. They're 10 and 7 overall, and they're 4 and 5 in the league. The only record that matters when you discuss Auburn right now is they are 4 and 2 with Sharif Cooper. And they're taking on number two Baylor today in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Tillman trying to cut into this TCU lead. Now Samuel on his hip, and Samuel knocked it away, but with the reach in, commits a foul. <laughs> One of the things that big guys have to learn defensively is to create space. And I felt like that time Samuel was in the grill after Tillman got the ball inside. He was in Tillman's grill. Actually, when the guy gets the ball, you need to back off half a step so that you have space and room to operate as a defender. TCU brings freshman Eddie Lampkin into the game as Samuel picked up his third foul. He's the first Horned Frog to three fouls. Drew Smith, the lone Tiger right now with three fouls. And those fouls really have gotten him out of the rhythm of this game. Here is Drew Smith. Some contact, but no whistle. TC with the ball in the five-point lead. Bannon, who's been hot, decided the dribble drive and ran into a crowd the other way. Mizzou floater good up and in for Javon Pickett. And a bad nine turn points for him. One in leads to easy hoops on the other, an easy hoop on the other. That's exactly what Missouri wanted. I felt like TCU down the stretch at Kansas the other night. They had some of those bad turnovers at the wrong time. Now they had a lot of turnovers. They had 22 in the game, but any kind of shot here is better than the best of turnovers. Nivard tries the kiss. Kept alive. Lampkin back up in the freshman with the bucket. And for Lampkin, that is the first made field goal for him in his collegiate career. 
How about the guys off the bench for Jamie Dixon and the roles that they have played today? And one for Jeremiah Tillman. It's the exact same thing, Mark Neely, in terms of playing post defense. Watch when Tillman starts to turn. Notice that the young freshman Lampkin is right there with him and leans into his grill. And that's why he gets the foul. Go ahead and create some space. Be a shot blocker. Tillman, two of seven from the line today. And he completes a three-point play. Third 20-point game of the season for Jeremiah Tillman. TCU's lead down to two. And it stays two after the miss by Ladee. Now Ladee takes that shot because Tillman's not going to come out on the floor to defend. How about the nice hands though by Fuller? Fuller the steal and takes it to the rim to lay it in. TCU back up by four. Well, that's usually when the pick six happens in basketball. Passes back to the middle of the floor. Ladee bodying up on Tillman. Timeout. Well, we all know a week from tomorrow is the Super Bowl. My partner and I will tell you our picks when we come back. Under eight minutes to go in Columbia, it's TCU with the four-point lead in this matchup in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Tomorrow is a week away from the Super Bowl. I'm at my home studio in the Kansas City suburbs. My partner's in Florida in Gainesville. So guess who we're each taking in the Super Bowl? Kansas City on my side. Who you got, Gronk? Well, you know what, Mark? I'm a huge Patrick Mahomes fan, but come on. I live in Florida. It's go Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say go Chiefs. We'll leave it at that. It should be a great game. Looking forward to it a week from tomorrow. And we've had a great game here. Four-point lead for TCU. Yeah, let's hope the Super Bowl is this good. No question. Pinson spinning, shooting. It rolls off. Brown able to get the rebound with one arm, and then he's pushed and fouled. I love the activity by Kobe Brown on the, he's gonna come from the left side of your screen and just kind of follows the ball. If you wanna be a good offensive rebounder, a lot of times it's all about want to, effort. Follow where the ball goes, good things will happen. Brown kind of quietly leading Mizzou with six rebounds today. And he hits the front end of an important one and one for the Tigers after the 17th foul against TCU. Brown just a 57% foul shooter on the year. Coming in, hits both, and makes it a two-point game. Those two look sweet, didn't they? True, very true. And Miles, a little trouble getting it across, and does so in time. Drive. Wow! <laughs> Adjusting, got it over Tillman, and a steal. Fuller gets it back. Miles feeds Nimhard a three. God, and what a sequence for TCU. And suddenly the Horned Frogs are up seven. Trying to answer. Pick it. No, oh, but a stuff. All right, Tillman, he has 25 to tie a career high. I hope you like your action end to end. Both teams in the middle of the ring, landing blow after blow. Samuel just a hair strong on that jump hook. Tillman, by the way, had 25 points at Arkansas earlier this month on January 2nd to set a career high. He's tied that 
Now he is stripped by Mike Miles. Frogs in transition, a lob, and laid in by Nimhart. And right now, TCU is on fire offensively. And what a sequence to give them a seven-point lead. It is the Miles to Nimhart show lately. TCU on the road, up top. Well, TCU in their last three games combined were shooting 34% over those three games. They're shooting 59% so far today and lead it on the road at Missouri by seven with six and a half minutes to go. Henson gets in the lane. Yeah, that's out of control. Bad shot usually leads to a run out on the other and end. it does so. Miles and TCU clicking as well offensively as I have seen them all year, and I think their fans would agree there's an answer. Well, Mark, we Cut talked about Miles seven. and Nimhart. We knew what we were going to get from them, but TCU needed a third double-figure score. O'Bannon has given them that, and then they, in, in addition to that, they have 23 bench points. So T TCU has got, and Jimmy Dixon has gotten great production up and down his lineup. Open three. Wow. And the shots are falling for TCU in Columbia. O'Bannon with another three. He has we 15 points. Big time upset alert. TCU's hit six of their last seven from the field. And they took advantage of uh, an opportunity in transition here. Ill-advised shot. Your point guard drives the rim. Nobody's back in rotation. And Mike Miles takes advantage. Twenty-one points for Miles on ten of fifteen shooting. Coming off his eighteen-point game, which was a game high in Lawrence on Thursday. We're coming up tomorrow, seven Eastern, six Central on the SEC Network. We'll have the latest episode of True South. John T. Edge traveling around Phoenix City, Alabama, eating half weenies at the 14th Street Grill and checking out jerk fried chicken at Rose's Caribbean in Columbus, Georgia. He'll also explore Fort Benning Army Base. While he's there, True South presented by Yellowwood. Right now, Missouri needs a stop. Still a lot of basketball to play over five minutes, but if TCU were able to hang on and win this game, this certainly would qualify as a major upset in this SEC Big 12 challenge. That is Once such again, a hard. Big time finish in traffic. Nimhart and Miles scoring at will, creating havoc defensively. And in transition again, tip. And that one falls on the tip by Miles, who has 23. And it's a double digit lead for TCU with 4.41 to go. Timeout, Mizzou. Again, it's poor decision making on the offensive end by Missouri, whether it be poor shot selection or turning the ball over. And TCU, I think, Mark, is smelling blood in the water. They're not waiting around for any half-court sets. They're attacking, and I love that in transition. And so when you talk about Nimhard and Miles and, and what you get from them on a nightly basis, and then O'Bannon comes in and has 13 points, and those bench points have added up, and that's the reason why we have the score we do. TCU playing outstanding. Well, the 82 points was still 441 to go is the second highest point total in a game this year for TCU. Their high point total is 89. That was against uh, North Dakota State in non-conference play. And it's really been the shooting for TCU. Snark, very huge difference, not only in, in the last three games, including the game Thursday at Kansas, but today over 60%. Well, those bench points t plus 21 in differential of the two teams and what the benches have produced. Samuel commits a foul. I believe that was Samuel, and if so, that's his fourth. 
I was very fortunate because the pass went on the wrong side of Tillman as he was coming up to set a ball screen. And Samuel followed that pass, and once Tillman was able to gather that ball, then Sam and Samuel was on the wrong side. Maybe, Mark Neely, this is the best defense against Tillman. Put him at the free throw line. Well, you saw Samuel after committing his fourth foul, kind of waving at the TCU bench like, no, no, leave me in. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep playing. <laughs> One and two for Tillman, 26 points, which does now give him a new career high. You know, at what time do you start milking clock a little bit? You've got to maintain, and this is a hard thing to do. You have got, if you're gonna utilize a little clock, make sure you're still aggressive in the back half of the possession. Miss by Miles on the drive. Mizzou needing some buckets. Just over four minutes to go, down 11. Tillman skip pass, a dangerous one intended for Mark Smith, and Miles steps in the way to steal it. Not enough body movement on the Missouri offense. Too stagnant. Nine Missouri make it now 10 Mizzou turnovers today. And this is what TCU is going to do, what you were just talking about, Mark. Going to milk some of this clock. Try to come away with an upset at Mizzou. A collision between Pickett and Miles and Pickett is shaken up. We go to break with 3.34 left in this SEC Big 12 Challenge game from Columbia, Missouri, and TCU up by 11. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire for what you do. From Mizzou on this SEC Big 12 Challenge, it's TCU with an 11 point lead and Mike Miles, their freshman mark, three points away from a career high with 23. And he's got it, and he's gotten it done today in all kinds of facets. It's been an efficient scoring afternoon for Miles. He's got 23 points on just 17 shots, but his ability to get to the rim and finish in traffic has been outstanding. It's his fourth 20 plus game of the season for the young freshman. In his career high is 26. That came against North Dakota State. Now Mizzou really needing some stops. Bannon. Rebound by Kobe Brown, and Mizzou gets a stop there. But down 11. Over three minutes to go. Pretty good look. Really Tillman. For Bannon. Already got four fouls on Samuel, and there's number five. And Kevin Samuel has just fouled out. He is the first player for TCU to foul out of a game this year. Yeah, they don't foul a lot. Only 14 times a game in Big 12 action. Take another look as pretty obvious that Missouri is almost running every possession through Tillman. The, I understand why you would do that, but Mark, if you're needing to catch up on points and you're sending a guy to the free throw line who's only making 51% down the year, on the year. Um, it's going to be hard to catch up but by continuing to feed Tillman the ball. Shooting two shots here. It's a great day of hoops rolling on. We have more SEC Big 12 action with KU Tennessee tonight, 6 Eastern on ESPN, and then number one Gonzaga and Pepperdine in a big West Coast Conference clash later tonight on ESPN. Both free throws from Tillman, big for Mizzou to get it down to single digits. That's huge. Here's the press. I wouldn't back off. That allows Miles to run it ahead and find a wide open O'Bannon in the corner. Shots not falling at quite the frequency they were earlier for TCU, but it'd be hard to stay that hot that long. Drew Smith barreling his way into the lane, and the foul is on P.J. Fuller. As Smith forces the issue after the miss in transition, kind of lowers his shoulder, but that's a good call. Our game has way too many charges in it. If there's any kind of doubt, 50-50 on the block charge, give the advantage to the offensive player. Call more blocks, less charges. 
He hits the first of two. A lot of times, though, Mark, when that shoulder goes down, you'll see officials call the, the offensive yep. foul. They did not there. Well, this is what you want if you're Missouri, scoring with the clock stopped. That's off TCU and O'Bannon, who was wrestling with Kobe Brown for the rebound. So another possession for the Tigers. And yeah, still a lot of time. Here. Yeah, and you score here, it's a two-possession game. Tillman, Ladee reaching to get a piece of that to knock it out of bounds. It's a good so job by Samuel to push Tillman off the block a little bit. Samuel started out on Tillman. Ladee got in early. Eddie Lampkin, a freshman, so they've thrown three different bodies at Tillman here today. Bruce Smith lost a handle, but his fortunate Pinson is there. Puts it up with three on the shot clock and a chance for a four-point play on a made three by Xavier Pinson. I was about to say I don't like the step back here. Pinson, Missouri has nothing going, and he just drains that three ball from deep. And how about the end one for four? An 8-0 run for Missouri in the blink of an eye, and it's a four-point game with two and a half minutes to go. Yeah, I'm not so sure that you can be so consumed right now about eating clock. Find your offensive rhythm again. Fuller. Ladee offensive rebound over Tillman. And a Mizzou foul stops it with 2.14 to go. I love this decision by Jamie Dixon to run your offense. Forget milking clock now. There's the block, but Ladee just more active on the offensive glass. Maybe Dixon's team trying to snap a four-game losing skill. They haven't won since January 2nd. That was at K-State. Of course, there has been a 16-day interruption in their season. They didn't play 16 days between a loss at OU and then the loss at Kansas on Thursday. We talked about Tillman's struggles at the line. Ladee just 59%, but he was 71% a year ago. And he hits both free throws there. Still a two possession game. Mizzou down six, just over two minutes to go. They have shot the three well here in the second half, the Tigers have. Trying to keep it going. And a guy who has been stone cold from three point range in recent games, Mark Smith drains one for Mizzou. And he came off a screen by Tillman. How about that call by Conzo Martin? His best three-point shooter has really struggled this season, and yet he still calls his number. Last two games, Mark Smith was a combined one for ten at three-point shooting at Tennessee and at Auburn. And he had missed three of them today. Oh, what a shot <laughs> for TCU. Miles is feeling it. And that high's a career high for him now. 26 points. Tillman got it. Five-point game. Clock running. Pressure full court from the Tigers. Well, here's the possession of the game, I think, defensively for Missouri. Under a minute to go. And this SEC Big 12 challenge from Mizzou. TCU trying to pull a big upset against the number 12 Tigers. Shot clock's under five. Nimhart shoots it over. Pinson in and out. Tipped into the hands of Brown. Here come the Tigers down four. Plenty of time. You don't have to force anything. Mark Smith. Pinson, a three. Good! It's a one-point game. Now you've got a foul. Bruce but again, Smith I love does. Excuse me, Mark. I love the kick out. Don't force the issue. Get feet in the paint. 
and find a teammate. And everybody is making big time plays now. Mike Miles, the freshman with that step back. Three, money, head of the key. Pinson delivers for Missouri on their end. Well, Drew Smith needed to stop the clock with that foul. That was his fourth foul. Just under 24 seconds to go. And TCU at one point led by a dozen. That has been cut to one. Well, when Mizzou lost the other night at Auburn, 88-82, the 88 points scored by Auburn was the most by a Mizzou opponent this year. In fact, Missouri had not allowed even 80 points in a game this season until then. It's back-to-back -back games over 80, and TCU sitting at 87. And right now, the huddle in Mizzou, what's uh, on Conzo Martin's mind, Mark? I think, Mark, Conzo Martin's telling his team there is plenty of time for us to get a quality look. Same thing I said in the last possession. Even if TCU makes both free throws, it's a one possession game, and there's plenty of time to get a quick two. It's all five to the offensive class, so you don't have to worry about getting back right now. The, the idea is make sure you get something good, not something forced. And if I'm on the other end with Jamie Dixon, I'm talking to the team about don't get beat off the bounce to allow the kick out to happen. And then the other discussion that I'm having, if Tillman gets a touch inside, am I gonna go ahead and foul him and put him to the free throw line? All things to ponder with 23.8 seconds left. TCU has led throughout in this second half. In fact, the last time Missouri led was at the 439 mark of the first half when they were up 34-32. They have been traveling uphill, so to speak, since then. And have gotten it down to one, but Miles at the line. Shooting a one and one here after the seventh Missouri team foul. Well, I'm not a fan of not having guys on the line. That changes the routine. And the freshman nails a huge front end for the Frogs. That, by the way, that free throw is giving him 27 points. That's a new career high for him, and he makes it 28. Still a one-possession game, but the TCU lead is three. I'm still driving the ball to the rim, and if a defender happens to bite in a help situation, then I'll kick out. But try and get a quick two. TCU brings the deep to the bench. So it's back in Taryn Todd. When we're finished here, we'll send you to Central Florida, Wichita State, where Robert Ford and Tim Welsh. Well, this is taking a long time. Now they do shoot a three. Drew Smith missed. Tillman trying to put back, back out for the tie. Pits in. Got it! It's tied at 89! With just under four seconds to go. A couple of chances there for Mizzou, and they get it from the guy that's been their best three-point shooter in this second half. He hits his sixth of the game. I often talk about the best three-point opportunities and shots come after feet in the paint or offensive rebounds. Why offensive rebounds? Because the defense is so scattered, and you have such a long way to go for the closeout. Take another look at the Mizzou work on the offensive glass after the miss. And what I want you to keep your eye on after Drew Smith, watch, watch, I think it's Kobe Brown who comes up with this ball. It's the quick kick out. That is understanding how to play in a time and score situation. That is a great play by Brown and Penson delivers. And everybody in the Mizzou arena is on their feet. Now Kobe Brown, seven points today, but 11 rebounds. He's played a really good floor game. Well, TCU with 440 left had a 12-point lead, their largest of the game. They were up 82-70. Zoo's gone on a 19-7 run here. TCU has the ball and a chance here to win it in regulation with 3.9 seconds left. 
I'm going to go with the Fran Fraschilla. You get a dribble a second theory here, which I happen to agree with. This is all dependent on how far up the floor the first pass comes. And I, if I'm Missouri, I'm picking up. I'm not letting the pass inbounds cover 30 or 40 feet. The ball has to go to Miles, doesn't it? In some way, shape, or form? I would think so. Fuller's going to inbounds. Mitchell Smith guarding the inbounds passer. Here we go. Tied at 89. They get it to Miles. He gets it off in time. And we're going to overtime in Columbia. Well, step aside. Don't go anywhere. OT coming from Columbia when we come back. We welcome you to Overtime, presented by Papa John's. An 18-7 run to end regulation for Mizzou. And this SEC Big 12 Challenge game from Columbia, Missouri, is tied at 89, TCU and Missouri. Great to have you with us, along with Mark Wise. I'm Mark Neely. A 12-point lead for TCU, Mark, with 440 to go. And then, like a light switch, Mizzou got the plays they needed, got the shots to fall when they needed, including a big three from Pickett late in regulation. Well, again, I, I don't think there was anything down the stretch of that where TCU was handing Missouri easy points for the most part. It's just that Missouri had to make so many correct plays down the stretch, and they delivered on almost all of them. And, Mark Neely, you, you've got nothing else to do today. I mean, what, what else are you going to do today? It's all about I mean, the hoops. This is overtime. How can you not love this? I do. I'm excited for it. Mizzou has come back in this game to tie it at 89. Mizzou, by the way, they went four years without playing in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. They played the first couple of years, got back in it last year, lost it West Virginia. TCU, like all Big 12 teams, have played in every one of them. They're four and three in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. But Mizzou's only win in this was in the first year when they beat West Virginia back in the 2013-14 season, 80-71 in the Challenge. And here we go in overtime. Missouri has the first possession. Both of these teams have been marvelous in close games, decided by five points or less. TCU 4-1, Missouri 2-0. Drew Smith playing with four fouls. Finds Tillman going to the rim and one. And a foul on Fuller. Again, it is the ability to create, get feet in the paint, draw defenders. Nice little slice cut that time by Tillman. The big guy delivers again. In and out. We're going to get a lane violation, though, on TCU. And Tillman's going to get another shot. He's at 32 points, which is a new career high, exceeding the 25 he had at Arkansas earlier this year, which had set that mark. Most of lane violations are because your feet are too close together. And so you don't have good balance. Fuller got in just a little early because he was off balance. Tillman can't, can't take advantage of the second opportunity. Hard sets it up for TCU with 10 on the shot clock. Him hard to drive, a foul on Mark Smith. I think TCU likes the matchup whenever Mark Smith is on the perimeter, whether he's guarding Miles or Nemhard, and that time it was Nemhard who took advantage of that matchup. First trip to the line today for R.J. Nimhard. It's a 75% foul shooter. A high scoring game in Columbia. I mentioned Tillman with a career high 32. Pinson has a career high 29 for the Tigers after setting a career high with 27 in that win at Tennessee recently. 
Here is Pinson. I'm sure Missouri's going to go back into Tillman, run their offense through him. Big That's challenge indeed. for Ladee. Yeah, it is indeed. This pick at a floater. Ladee may have got a hand on that. Loose ball. Pinson gets to it. Shot clock still winding down. And a three from Pinson. Tillman got a hand on it. Brown once again saves it. Great ball movement. Tillman going to the line for two, but another tremendous play by Kobe Brown on that rebound to keep it alive for Missouri. Yeah, remember Brown late in the game gave Missouri another offensive rebound, and then the Pinson one, it was he that kicked the ball out. So he yes. does it again to Drew Smith, and Drew Smith makes the extra pass inside to Tillman. And that's the challenge for this TCU team now without their best rebounder, Samuel, in the game. Kevin Samuel fouled out late in regulation. Tillman. Samuel finished with six points, three rebounds in his 18 minutes. Tillman, six of 14 from the line. I think it's seven of 15. It's got to be frustrating, though, doesn't it? No you, doubt. Can see after, it you can see his shoulders shrug after he made that one. Becomes so mental. Now, Nimhart had gotten a step on Mark Smith. Got the grab there. Yeah, but this is a bad trade for Missouri. Tillman going to the free throw line for two free throws versus Nimhard for TCU. It is a one and one. And he misses the front end after the ninth Mizzou team foul. Mizzou with the ball up one. 3.20 to go in overtime in Columbia. This great SEC Big 12 challenge matchup. It's the play they ran for Smith earlier when he made a three. Just a little bit of a, a bump there as Pinson got into the lane. Utilized the high ball screen for the crossover and kept the defender on his back. And that's what got the foul and gets him to the free throw line. And TCU now starting to lose bodies. Yeah, that's number five on Fuller. Again, TCU had not had a player foul out all season. Now they've had two today with Kevin Samuel and now P.J. Fuller. <laughs> Oklahoma won, as did Texas A&M in the early games. West Virginia leading. Tech wins it over LSU. We're in overtime at Mizzou. Three-point lead for the Tigers. Three minutes to go in OT. Miles. Tough shot. Tillman comes away with it. Good job of Mark Smith just walling up on that shot, making it a tough look for Miles. I don't think you can, uh, now this, it's almost like the script is flipped because I don't think you can milk clock if you're Missouri in a one possession game. Attack. I think this is a carry. carry. Yep. On Pinson and a big turnover there gives it back to TCU. I actually thought Pinson carried the ball in his last possession with that ball screen we talked about. <laughs> he kind of kept it there, didn't he? <laughs> he did indeed. That's the 11th Mizzou turnover. TCU's done a much better job protecting the ball today. Over 20 turnovers in Lawrence Thursday against Kansas. Just seven today. O'Bannon. Fouled by Tillman, who picks up his third. What I liked about TCU executing here on the handoff, it puts the defender behind the wraparound. 
Watch on this handoff. Brown is now trailing the play. And that allows O'Bannon to get all the way to the rim. That's good half-court execution by TCU. 16 now for O'Bannon. This is his first trip to the strike today. He can make it a one-point game if he hits this one. Back and forth we go from the Zoo Arena. What a game it has been. This SEC Big 12 Challenge. Under two minutes. Benson resets. He launches a three and it's well short. An air ball goes down of bounds. Yeah, I know he made one earlier on that and one for four point opportunity, but uh, that's not the shot you want there. You're in the last two minutes of a one point game in overtime. Don't settle for a step back three. Nimhart in the crowd came back down with it. Possession arrow. TCU. Nimhart again splits defenders, gets inside. You see Brown's arms are not vertical. I think that's a foul. Nimhart trying to back down Drew Smith and hits a tough fadeaway to give TCU the lead. Those are the kinds of shots TCU made with regularity in the first half. Open, Pinson, three, good! Notice that is a completely different three-point attempt. In the corner, feet set, be ready to be a catch, receiver, and shooter. Nimar trying to answer, but too strong off the back rim. Ladee had the offensive rebound, and Brown knocked it out of bounds. Well, let's take a look at this game's best stuff presented by Papa John's. A number of guys setting career highs today for points. <laughs> Tillman and Pinson for Mizzou, Miles for TCU. All of those guys have been fantastic today. Miles so efficient as a score. 12 to 19 from the field for Miles, who for me hasn't touched it enough in this overtime mark-wise. Well, they're going through Nimhart at the top. Oh, what a nice save, but right to your own basket. Ladee and one. But as you said, the mistake saving it, Smith threw it back underneath his own basket, and Ladee was there for TCU. Yeah, this is a ball. If you're going to save it in your own half court, now that's just an instinctive play. Tough luck for Missouri. But you really want to throw that ball back up the floor. And Ladee... Johnny on the spot. He's three of four from the line today. Ladi, who came in as a 59% foul shooter, and TCU's up one. Under a minute to go in OT. Do you have the courage to go two for one in this situation? Oh, Drew Smith on the take, high off the glass. A high degree of difficulty. And they went two for one. Nimhard, good defense, defense by Mark Smith, and then Pinson comes up with it. Nimhard has to commit the foul with 28 seconds left. There was plenty of time to get a better look. I said, would Missouri go two for one? Well. Drew Smith went immediately to the rim. Look how high that off the window that is with the left hand. And then Mark, Mark Smith guarding Nimhart gets away with a foul there, no question. And Nimhart has to foul. And again, the script is completely flipped. Regardless of what happens here, this will still be a one possession game. Plenty of time for TCU to get a quality two. Pinson hits both. Last time Missouri hit the century mark in a game, December 9, 2017, against Green Bay. 
They're up 101 98, and it ain't over with 28 seconds left. Today, we have been witness to the artistry, if you will, of the young freshman for TCU from Lancaster, Texas, Mike Miles. The big fella, Jeremiah Tillman, has had his way down in that high rent district with a new career high. And then Xavier Pinson, who is coming off a, a, one of his poorer games, has a great bounce back, including that late three that put this game into overtime. So three different guys, three different stars, three big time performances. You see for Pinson, 36 points. The last time a Mizzou player scored 35 or more points in a game, you got to go back to January 16th of 2006. And Thomas Gardner had 40 against Kansas. You know, Mark, it's hard to get 36 points in practice, much less a game. <laughs> and you got Tillman, who's with 33 right now for Mizzou. So they have two 30 plus point scores in this game. Yet the outcome is still in doubt here in overtime in Columbia. I have to believe that TCU in this possession will work through Miles and Nemhard on top with that high ball screen. What's interesting to me is what does Jeremiah Tillman do as defending the screener? Would he go ahead and play off? Because if you play off, that might allow Nemhard and Miles to take a look at a three. If you come up and try to hedge on that, It'll allow Nimhart and Miles, four miles, to get feet in the paint. Then what do you do? If you're Conzo Martin, the thing that you're telling your team, don't give up a three. Well, whenever we're finished from here, whenever that may be, we will send you to Wichita, Central Florida and Wichita State in the American Conference when we are through here. And oddly enough, Mark Neely, that's an important game for Missouri because Wichita State is at 74 in the net. And they've gone back and forth with that being a quad one win for Missouri. So if you're a Missouri fan, you want two things to happen. You want to finish this game with a W, but then you're going to root for the Shockers. And Mizzou fans were probably pretty happy that Illinois beat Iowa last night because Mizzou has a win over Illinois in the bragging rights game earlier here in Columbia. Well, and here's, and since we're on this resume building conversation, if you're safely in the tournament, like Missouri is right now, and you're playing the rest of, of your season, there are two kinds of games. There's resume builders, resume protectors. And where TCU is now in the net, somewhere in the 90s, this, with this being a home game for Conzo Martin in Missouri, this very much is a resume protector. with 28.3 seconds left in overtime. Mizzou up by three. TCU ball. Miles leading TCU with 28. Nimhart coming on here late has 15, though he's playing with four fouls. TCU has already lost Samuel and Fuller, who have fouled out. And Miles has played 41 minutes in this game. Wow. They put it in his hands here. Here comes the high ball screen. Stolen by Brown. Kobe Brown, in a game where he has two teammates that have more than 30 points, Kobe Brown has played an outstanding floor game for Missouri today. I think it's a great point you make, Mark, because Kobe Brown has scored seven points. I could easily make the argument that he has been Missouri's most valuable player down the stretch and in overtime with what he has given them in terms of an offensive rebounder and a presence to allow Missouri to have better three-point looks. This now is the first free throw. Yeah, TCU's response, I think, will be dictated whether this is a make or miss because you just cannot trade points at this point in time. There's not enough time left. He's short with it. It stays a one possession game, but he gets the rebound with some help from Mark Smith. And now they'll send Drew Smith to the line. TCU got what they wanted. Two free throw misses. 
but didn't get the bounce and couldn't get the rebound. And he missed the second shot so short that it came back out long, and that's what allowed Missouri to get the second, the, re the offensive rebound. Wow, my goodness. Well, here's Drew Smith, who's an 88% free throw shooter. He misses the first. Here's that last free throw from Brown. It just came out so long. Mark Smith was able to knock it back. Oh, my goodness. And a lane violation. Oh, another one. Second time today for TCU. And that's huge because they would have had the ball just down three. But instead, Drew Smith's going to get another shot. Get your feet wider than your shoulders for better balance. Todd got in too early. It gives him another chance. Now it's a two-possession game. Three miles, well short. And the Missouri Tigers are going to pull it out in overtime over TCU. 102-98. Mark Wise, what a game we saw here. Sometimes, Mark Neely, you've got to win games that you probably shouldn't have. Credit Missouri for the great cat comeback in the second half. 32-16 run to end the game. Mizzou wins in OT. For Mark Wise and our entire outstanding crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. Let's get you to Wichita State. Robert Ford and Tim Welsh.